Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen. In this week's top stories, Radiant opens her eyes. Clarioso hits a snag. Viad spotted in University Square. Tempest Fugitive runs out of time. And more on this week's Alpha City News. From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only newscast that gives you all the super news in the city or the world. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Our first story isn't really news, as it's been on everyone's lips for the past few days. But Dr. Escalapius announced officially that Jamarganon's treatment of Radiant has borne fruit, and that our heroine has awakened from the coma that has held her in its grip for weeks. Radiant's coma had been brought on by an imbalance between her natural energy-manipulating powers and the black dwarf star radiation she had been infected with by the Gatan when she was their prisoner. Though hardly ready to leave her hospital bed, it's hoped that Radiant's recovery will move quickly now that she can take an active part in the process. Radiant has seen a steady stream of visitors, from close friends A Flower, Jackie Quick, and Captain Stupendous to groups of League of Nations officers, with whom Radiant is sharing the secret of how she forced the Gatan spies to unmask themselves. It is also reported that Jamarganon has learned much of the inner workings of the Gatan from Radiant, as she is one of the few beings to have found themselves captured by the Gatan who managed to live to tell the tale. The Jewel Star League, according to Jamarganon, has already used Radiant's information to make headway against several hidden Gatan bases. Dr. Escalapius read a statement from Radiant, where she thanks all of her well-wishers, but asked that they not send presents to her, rather that they make donations to a charity, donate blood, or simply help someone who needs it. She assured all Alpha citizens that she would soon be back at the forefront of those defending our fair city. In related news, the International Red Cross and Crescent reports that donations of blood have tripled in Alpha City almost overnight. The road of romance is fraught with pitfalls, even for those used to flying. Glorioso and Clayton Astounding, who have been spotted canoodling at several well-known hotspots in between busting bad guys together, and who are already being referred to in the scandal sheets as Clarioso, may have hit a bit of a rough patch. Intrepid Alpha City News reporter Lindy Johnston reports that, at the scene of the power couple's takedown of villain Charlatano, a sometimes paramour of Glorioso from her native Italy, the two seem to be locked in an argument about Glorioso's style of dress, which the Edwardian Superman was heard to describe as unbecoming for a lady of her quality. That matters of convention would be a sticking point for these two in particular is, unfortunately, unsurprising. Glorioso was an international supermodel beginning in her teens and has always been an icon of superstyle, having a huge impact on not just emerging superheroines, but on the fashion industry as a whole. Never afraid to display her exceptional physical beauty, Glorioso's costume history displays an almost perfect melding of beauty and function. She has even claimed that her display of assets, as she calls them, has been as important as her superpowers in her fight against crime. Her incredible effectiveness, along with her willingness to take any risk to help the innocent, certainly belies that claim. Clayton Astounding, by contrast, is literally a man from a different era. Born in 1877, empowered by the Vitruvian Society in 1895, and frozen by his enemies in 1905, the Edwardian Superman woke to a world vastly different from the one that birthed him. 
For a short period after his revival, it seemed like this refugee from the past might turn his back on the entire world. So convinced was he of our corruption. But Astounding found that, while much had changed, there were still those who needed a good man to fight for them, and he embraced the turn of events which led him to our time. While he has done an admirable job of becoming a man of today, it can be incredibly hard to shake loose the prejudices of the past, which seems to be the trouble with this otherwise perfect couple. Here's hoping that Clayton Astounding and Glorioso can find common ground. After all, it's been too long since the last super wedding. The creature called Viad was spotted in University Square the day after it destroyed a laboratory building at Eisner University, which resulted in the death of graduate student Jamie Evers. Tom Dubinsky, handyman at the off-campus apartment building where Jamie Evers lived, says he entered her apartment to perform some repairs and found the creature, which he described as being seven feet tall, generally man-shaped, and giving off a chilling white haze that covered the floor around it. The Viad reportedly blew Dubinsky back out of the apartment, sending him through a railing and tumbling down a stairway after which it tore through the outer wall of the apartment, landing on the street below. A passing motorist saw the via dissolve into a gray mist, which then sank into the sewer system. Police questioned Mr. Dubinsky at the hospital and, after investigation, placed him under arrest, as it quickly became apparent that he had not entered Miss Evers' apartment on official business, but with the intent to rob the recently deceased. Police found evidence in Dubinsky's apartment that he had been responsible for at least eight previous thefts at the apartment complex where he was employed. Why the Viad would appear at the home of Miss Evers is currently unknown. Anders Breitman, the Bright Man, led police to a small courtyard in Bakersley on Tuesday, where, after a short wait, the Tempest fugitive appeared and was arrested. Long-time listeners will remember the crime spree the Tempest fugitive undertook four years ago, where he robbed six different banks, two jewelry stores, and three museums all at exactly the same time, while causing 14 accidents around the city to distract heroes and police. At the time, many theories of teleporting, cloning, and mind control were bruited about, but the bright man concluded and proved that a single individual was responsible for the day's mayhem and that the individual was using some sort of time travel to appear in different locations at the same moment. Dubbed the Tempest Fugitive by the press, it has been a four-year-long wait for the bright man to pick up the signs in the time stream that signaled the thief was about to reappear. Rendered complacent by what he assumed was a clean temporal getaway, the fugitive was unprepared for the presence of either the police or the bright man, and found himself tased and handcuffed to two police officers almost before he could react. When the bright man stripped the fugitive of the necklace which allowed his chronal perambulations, the fugitive, later identified as career criminal Eli Dandel, begged that the device not leave the bright man's grasp, for reasons which became apparent when, after placing the necklace in an evidence bag, it winked out of existence. The crying Dandel told police that without someone from this era touching the device, it automatically returned to its home time period. Keys which Dandel had on his person led the police to four different storage lockers, each with a quarter of the stolen goods in it. Eli Dandel was arrested on a very long list of charges. <laughs> John Maldif, owner of recently destroyed eatery Basidiome, has become a regular visitor to Maryvale Prison, spending several days each week speaking to his old friend slash enemy, Simon Stone, better known to the world as the Subterranean. Mr. Maldif has chosen not to press charges against Stone for the destruction of his restaurant, though Stone is still awaiting trial on outstanding charges for his past crime. 
Stone has been helped immensely by Maldives' presence, according to the prison staff. Over the weeks of their renewed contact, Stone has slowly become less angry, less prone to starting trouble with guards and inmates, and much easier for his lawyers to communicate with. Simon has spent so long alone, with only the barely sentient subterrans for company, said Maldif. I believe that he had forgotten the simple joy of spending time with someone who values and cares about him. Though I would have preferred to reconnect with him without a plate of glass separating us, it still brings joy to me, not just to see my old friend, but also to know that these simple conversations we're having are helping him to find his lost humanity. Given a choice between not seeing him and seeing him like this, well, I know which I prefer, and I think Simon feels the same way. The Spirit of Forgiveness, embodied in a former villain. And now, this week's Super Combat Scorecard. Space Cowboy stopped the Huckster from stealing Pluto City. The Chamberlain lost a battle of magical wits against the Red Warlock. Presto the Witch met with an ancient master of magic known only as the Sage to prepare for a coming trial she must face. The Quiet Man snuck up on a gang trying to rob schoolchildren. The bridge thief made another play to steal the 5th Street Bridge, but was aced out by Acrojack. Shagadelic was trounced by Groovetron. Tower Thompson was brought down by Gargantua. The snail got smeared by Jackie Quick. The dancer in the dark was lit up by Nightlight and Dusky. Mondo Biondo tangled with Mondo Mayhem, with Mayhem emerging victorious. Hunter Crimson used her arrows to pop the tires of a bank robbery getaway car, making their arrest quite easy. Richard Sunlight bound the demon Mechrag in chains of light and sent the monster back below. Mr. Sebastian If put the kibosh on a pair of fake psychics offering contact with dead relatives. Bonko the Clown scraped off Cake Face with no real effort. Hugo Reese helped a family get out from under the thumb of local loan sharks. The Looking Glass Man is investigating clues which might lead to the Plague Doctor and his last kidnapped victim, Rita Marquez. Crankor from Space Lemuria got into what was essentially a slap fight with Hot Bucket. Both were taken down by Oddball, leader of the Odd Squad. The rest of the Odd Squad, Pencil Test, Gunk, and River Dancer, faced down the Furies 3. Roman the Human Robot is investigating an art theft on Battle Hill, at which the calling card of Vanilla Wednesday was left. Captain Stupendous gave a well-received speech at the Youngstown Boys Reformatory. Big Weird Joe gave a well-received speech to a group of homeless in the yard section of Floptown. And finally, Minnie Moose has agreed to help scientists at the Vale Institute explore the infinitesimal yachtosphere. You've been listening to Alpha City News with Craig Allen. It was produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds were provided by Newsbeds.com. Wherever you found our podcast, please go back and leave a review if you would. And if you enjoyed the show, please tell your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop us a line at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Until next time, thanks for listening, and we hope you have a super day.